Ableton projects tend to end up with a lot of tracks and as a result can be difficult to manage. So let's take a look at how group tracks allow us to organize our sets and make them easier to navigate. So I've got exercise one from chapter 10 open and let's start by just grouping some tracks so we can see how it works. So I'm gonna select some like tracks here. I'm gonna select all these base tracks by clicking the first one and shift clicking the last one. And now I can group them by just right clicking on any one of the tracks and choosing group tracks from the contextual menu or I can use the key command, Command G for a Mac or Control G for a PC. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I've got these grouped, let me go ahead and name my group. I'm gonna call this Bases. And so we can see that these four tracks are part of this group because they're kind of underneath this little line that goes across the top. I like to think of that as kind of these tracks being within a folder. Now, if we go down to the track outputs, you'll notice that they are routed to the group track. And we can tell that because that's what we see in the name field here. So these four are being routed to this group track, and then the group track is being routed to the master. So this is effectively submixed these four tracks. Now, if I want to have the convenience of these being grouped, but not have the audio signals submixed, I can just select these four member tracks and I can reroute their outputs out to the master. So we can see these are all routed to the master, but I still have the convenience of being able to fold these tracks down. Now I actually like the submix functionality, so I'm gonna reset those back to bases. And so we're back to having these submixed. Now, if I want to remove a track from the group, all I need to do is drag it over to the side. And now you can see that the track is not part of the group. And if I want to put it back within the group, all I have to do is grab it and then drag it back against the left edge of the group. And you can see that it's now back as part of the group again. Let's go ahead and let's group the piano tracks. So I'll do the same thing, I'll select those. And now I'm gonna go Command G, that would be Control G on a PC. They're grouped, I'll go ahead and I'll hit my Command R to rename that and I'll call this Keys. And you can see now that when I click this little icon on the right hand side of the track or the group track headers, that I can really reduce the amount of clutter that I'm looking at. And if I need to get back in to work with one of these individual tracks, I can just reopen the group. Now, some things that you ought to know about group tracks is that you'll notice that we've actually got launch buttons. Group tracks cannot have clips on them, but they do have launch buttons and they do have these little kind of hatched insignias on them to show us that there are clips related to that particular slot. So if I want to launch all of the base clips related to this particular slot on the group track, I can do that. Now, let me make sure I'm gonna play in session view. So I'll hit the stop all clips button. And now I'm gonna hit the launch button here on the basis track. And I also hit a stop button to show you that you can stop any of the member tracks from playing by clicking a stop button on the group track. Now, another thing I really like about group tracks is the ability to process all of the signals that are going through the track in one place. Because sometimes we need to EQ or compress all of these signals together in a way that will help them better fit within the mix. An example of that would be to grab an EQ and drop it on the group track. And now, for example, if I've got a little bit of kind of mid-range stuff that I want to get out of the way of a vocal, I can just grab a band here and set that where that vocal is sitting. And I might want to do something similar with getting signals out of the way of the bass. So I'll reset this to a high-pass filter, and I can pull this up and get rid of frequencies that might be down here that really aren't necessary and that are getting in the way of the kick drum or the bass part or over here with the vocal part. And I can do that in one place without having to add this EQ to every one of these tracks. 
Now, one other kind of odd thing that we can do with groups is we can group groups. So if I select these two group tracks and go Command G, or that would be Control G on a PC, now I've got two groups nested inside a larger group, and I might call this one Instruments or something else. Now, I normally wouldn't do something like this, so I'm actually going to right click, and I'm just going to show you that you can ungroup tracks as well. So now I'm back to my regular two, two groups here. Now the last thing I wanna show you over here is that I've got something that looks like a group, but it's actually a rack. And these are just channel strips. Notice that the clips are on this track with the virtual instrument, but I've got their outputs being routed through these channel strips. So this is a rack and this is not a group in that sense, but I can take that track and I can group it with all of the other percussion related tracks. So I've got them selected. I'll go Command G. I'll now give this my drums and perk name. I can look down and I can see that these tracks are routed or submixed over to that group track. But within that, I've also got this rack with its routing where all of these individual channel strips are being routed to the rack output, which in turn is being routed to the drums and percussion, which in turn is being routed to the master. So it can get a little complicated and it can get deep, but it's really handy as we try to organize our live set. So as you build your projects, try grouping similar tracks. This will help make your projects easier to navigate and allow you to add group effects where needed to improve your mixes.